Hello and welcome to another video in this series on Prologue Basics. Today we start a new theme into something called the cut. Um, it's quite an important um, aspect of Prologue, but it does um, come with, I guess, a little bit of mystery. It's seen as something that's difficult, something to be cautious of, and it is true. We do have to be a little bit cautious of it. So what we will do over the next few videos is introduce it gently um, and see with some very small minimum examples of why we need to be cautious and then how to use it safely um, and how it can be useful. You know, if, if this thing called the cut is so dangerous, why, why would we want to use it? So that's something we will um, cover in this next theme, which should cover um, the next few videos. In this in video, we're just going to do the most minimum thing, um, which is just to observe the behavior of the cut in the smallest example that I can think of, and then talk a little bit about what has happened. Um, and the reason we're taking this sort of gentle approach is because so many people do have difficulty with the cut um, so I wanted to not, you know, just do what many textbooks do, which is dive into the deepest depths of it. Um, but I wanted to just take you know, very short, gentle steps. Right, so let's dive in. So on the screen, which is example 12, and the code is all online on GitHub, and you can find the links um, from the blog, and, um, um, and, and which you can see. Um, listed on the YouTube kind of site as well. The code is just three short facts, so not even any complicated relations, um, just three simple facts. And they look very familiar. It's almost the kind of code we would have written in our very, very first example um, where we introduced the idea of facts and querying facts. So let's have a look at it. Um, the first fact uh, has a property called happy about something called John. And you can imagine that we're saying John is happy. The last, the third um, fact is also about the property happy, which is applicable to somebody or a thing called Jill. So again, we can say Jill is happy. The middle fact looks half familiar. It looks like it's about the property happy as applied to a thing called Jane in our world, a person. So it looks like this is saying Jane is happy in the same way that John is happy and Jill is happy, but there appears to be something a little bit different. Now we know this symbol, the colon dash, is um, the thing that connects the head of a rule to the body. And you might remember that the head is true if the body is true. So we've deciphered what this bit means. Now we just need to think about this new exclamation mark. That's new. That's not what we've seen. And you can see if I'm hovering over it, um, this particular instance of prologue is trying to be helpful and telling me what it is. It's ISO, it's part of the standard. And it's called the cut. Um, and that slash zero, if you remember, arity means it doesn't take any parameters. So this is the cut. And without it, it would just be a fact like any others. But we've added this um, um, extra thing. So rather than talk about what it is, because uh, I think a lot of textbooks dive straight into what it does, we're going to take a slightly different approach, which is to observe its behavior in this minimal example, and then talk about why we might be seeing that behavior. So let's start with the simplest, most reassuring thing we can do. We can query whether John is happy. If I can get my brackets right, if I can type. <laughs> so is John happy? Yeah, it's true. And that's because there is a fact in the database that tells us that. Let's 
and let's try Jill. Again, should be totally uncontroversial. True. Let's try Jane. So, so far, everything is as expected. Let's try Jane. We're asking, is does the property happy apply to a thing called Jane? You know, is that satisfied? And the answer is true. So, in some sense, this is all familiar. Um, the, the, the middle um, line of code, this one, seems to confirm, seems to say that Jane is happy. Because we've queried it, we said, is Jane happy? And the answer was, yeah, true. So it doesn't do anything overly surprising. It doesn't do anything that kind of totally negates what we expected. Everything so far is kind of what we expected. So what is this thing doing then? If it hasn't altered, the very basic behaviour. Let's ask the more general question, which is often what we do when we are experimenting and learning uh, with Prologue. So let's ask who is happy with a variable. And you'll, you'll remember we did, we learned how to do this very early on. Let's see, well, actually, before we run it, what should we expect? If this was normal code without that exclamation mark, we would expect three answers, X equals John, X equals Jane, and X equals Jill, in that order actually, um, because they satisfy this query. Let's run. John, Jane, Jill. Perfect. That's what we expected. Now, if we revert this code to include that strange exclamation mark, this strange cut, let's see what happens now. And this is where we need to pay attention. John, yes, we expected that. Jane, and then Prologue has not asked if it can continue. It didn't say, do you want to find a third answer? It's only given us the first two. So this is a change in behavior caused by the cut. That's, that's what the effect of the cut is. Um, and it's worth just pausing a little bit and maybe trying to work out what has happened. Um, when we queried directly, is John happy? We got yes. Is Jane happy? Yes. Is Jill happy? Yes. But now that we asked a more general question, who is happy? We got Jane, we got John, we got Jane, but we didn't get Jill. It's almost as if this cut stopped further progress, it stopped prologue from continuing. So what's really going on? Why would it give us all the answers when we ask specific questions, but only, and then stopped here, when we ask the more general question, what's happening? That's certainly the behavior we've observed. In fact, what we've observed and our theory um, about what's happening, that the cut has somehow stopped um, Prologue from continuing to find more solutions after that point, that is actually what it does. Um, but let's look at it in more detail. So on the blog, um, where you can read uh, this tutorial in kind of more slower time, and I've chosen my words a lot more carefully on the blog when I'm talking to you now, it's off the top of my head really. Um, there's a picture which is the um, search tree for this query, happy x. So the query is happy x, x is a variable. So we're asking which x satisfies this query. And all Prolog has to go on is what's in the database. And in the database, there are three facts. So it finds the first one, Happy John. And the way it knows it is relevant is firstly, the property is the same, Happy, Happy. And then the content, the thing between the brackets, the parameter, um, that unifies with this query. So John unifies with X. So X equals John, 
is an answer. But it doesn't stop there. It backtracks to the point and unsets the value of x. So it is back to where it started and didn't have a value. And then it tries again. It won't try Happy John again because it, it knows it's done that. It kind of leaves a mark, as it were, to say, yep, been there. And the next one is Happy Jane. Happy is relevant because it's the same property. The content unifies, the thing in the brackets, X and Jane unifies. So X equals Jane satisfies the query as well. Just what we would expect. And then if there wasn't this cut, we would expect Prolog to go back again, unset X to an unground state, and then unit try and then look in the database again and find happy Jill and find that X equals Jill is an answer. Then backtrack and find there's no more there's nothing else to um, consider in the database, so the job is done. But this time, Prolog appears to have stopped backtracking after this solution. And that is actually what the cut does. It stops backtracking at that point, which is why we get x equals John and x equals Jane, but not x equals Jill. And in fact, it's probably worth just emphasizing this point. X equals Jane is given as an answer, but it's only backtracking after that point that stopped. So it's not that the rule in which the cut appears is entirely stops. It's only where the, the cut actually appears after that anything is stopped. In the next video, we will talk a little bit more detail about uh, what backtracking is allowed before and after. But for now, in this introductory first kind of observation of the cut, we will observe that the cut has stopped backtracking. In the next video, we will explore, well, you know, before, after, you know, what, what is and isn't uh, stopped. So if those questions are on your mind, wait till the next video. I just didn't want to do everything in one video. So that's what the, um, the cut does. It stops backtracking. So it finds the first answer, finds the second, and then it cuts the search tree, which is why it's called the cut. It cuts the, um, the search tree. So it finds this, finds this, and then the cut prevents backtracking. So there is no opportunity to find the third answer. And you might be asking, well, why did it find all three answers when we did a direct query? Why did it find um, <clears throat> Jill when we asked directly? It's because there is no backtracking required when we're asking such a specific question. Happy Jill, to resolve that, Prolog just needs to find something that matches it in the, in the database, and it does. There you go. There's no backtracking there's no variable to be filled in um, with with this query. And the same with Jane and so on. They're all direct queries. So the thing to take away from there is the cut only affects backtracking. It doesn't make Prolog blind to whatever is after it, as this example has shown. So just to repeat that, Happy Jill is found. Prolog is not blind to this fact. It is only when we make use of backtracking that Prolog is stopped by the cut um, from exploring further answers after this point. So that's the important thing there. So I'll emphasize that to conclude this short video. Number one, <clears throat> the cut only affects backtracking. It stops Prolog from finding or searching for further solutions at that point. Now that is a partial answer to what the cut does. In the next video, we will explore in a little bit more detail what backtracking is allowed before and after the cut. So if that is a natural question in your mind now, the next video will explore that.
So that is an introduction to what the cut is. I hope this has been the simplest example you've seen. I couldn't think of anything shorter and clearer um, to introduce what it is and what it isn't. And what it is, it stops backtracking. What it doesn't do is make anything after it invisible to Prolog. It doesn't do that, as we've seen. Fantastic. We'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Bye.